A lamp to my feet is your word, a light to my path. Today's Mass, we are celebrating for a young man named Ben. Ben Burke, who took his life, 18 years old, and he's from Balancholic, Cork, if I'm not mistaken. And he's a good friend of a good friend of ours, who said he was a lovely lad, and he was a lad that you wouldn't have expected to have taken his life a common denominator in a lot of these young Irish suicides. And we're celebrating Mass for his eternal soul. Because I believe that Ben didn't have a light to be shown in his path, and he didn't have a word that was spoken to him that would produce light in his life, like so many, so many young people who don't have the message brought to them because there is no messenger in their life. St. Paul says in his letter to the Romans, it's a reading that we read today in the feast day of St. Timothy and Titus, his converts who he would have preached to and he would have wrote his letters, his pastoral letters to, telling them how to be shepherds. In the reading that we read today for their feast day, he says they're going to call like they're going to invoke people but they can't call and they can't invoke if they don't believe and they're not going to believe they're not going to be able to believe unless they hear but how are they going to hear to be able to believe to be able to invoke if there's nobody who's going to preach to them and nobody's going to preach to them if the preacher is not sent that's why the feet that come over the mountains that are bearing the good news are such beautiful feet because they're the feet of the messenger that is bringing light to a person who doesn't have light. He's bringing hope to a person that without that hope, everything crumbles and they end it in despair and in darkness. They want to invoke, they want to believe, and they want to hear, but they have nobody who brings them this message. And that's a scary and daunting responsibility for the messengers because we are messengers because we're baptized and we have the light, we have the seed, we have the life that they do not have and that they do not possess. And woe to that person if he doesn't evangelize. Evangelize means bringing the good news, that there is good news. It doesn't end here. Your existence is not horizontal. You're not the sum of what you can do or what you have. There's something way deeper in there. There's eternal life that's waiting for you, and it wants to be born in you in this life. And you're supposed to be having a relationship and an intimacy with a God who has gone through everything to come to know you, and he wants you to know him. And there's great news. And woe to us if we're not bringing this news to these young Bens and these young, these young people who are waiting for it, because they're invoking a different word, and they're receiving a different, they're hearing a different word, that's being drilled into them from the evil one. The evil one has his messengers that he sends out there. They're instruments of the devil, and they're working for the devil's agenda, which the devil is, is he wants us to be sterile, and he wants us to kill, and he wants us to corrupt and mutilate what is beautiful, what is godlike. Anything that's in the image and likeness of God, he wants to destroy. And, and, and that's, that's what he's preaching to them, and that's what his messengers of this, of this age are preaching to them. They're instruments of the dark world, and they're not bringing light to people's paths. They're shedding darkness and despair and suicide, and that's what they have. That's going to be there. Yes, like, or yes, it's going to be there, because his agents are working, and we have to be there as well. We have to be the messengers that are bringing light to these people's paths, and we have to be open to the Holy Spirit. We can we've stopped being enslaved through this the slavery of, of cowardice, of cowardice, and then it's holding us back, and we can't bring the message, and we can't deliver, and we can't transmit it. And who knows if that word was going to reach them, and that word was going to germinate in them, and then when they were in their dark hour, or they were in the need, they can invoke the word because they heard it, because there was a messenger who spoke it to him, and he obeyed the mission that he was sent on. I send you out, and although we're sent out like sheep among wolves, He's, he's our shepherd, and he's with us. I mean, he wants to send us. He wants us to go where he can't get. 
and and it's an, it's a terrible mystery. We understand like that. Okay, like he works through instruments, and how is this guy going to come to know God? Well, through me. It's a terrible mystery in, in the sense that it, it can be terrifying. And but we can't let ourselves be crippled. We can't let ourselves be crushed. We heard the story of a Christmas, which is a might be an it might be an extreme example of everything we're talking about, but it is a true story of a young lad who walked into a shop, and he was living his faith. He was actually doing ministry work and evangelization, so he was a bit used to it by now. Um, some of the prompts of the Holy Spirit, but he felt prompted by the Holy Spirit to do a handstand in the middle of the shop. And he did, he did the handstand and everybody was looking at him like he had two heads and he got up, whatever, got his thing and went out and the man stopped him who was also in the shop and he asked him what the heck that was all about, like doing a handstand in the middle of a shop. And he said he didn't know, actually, he couldn't tell him, but he just felt that, like, that he was inspired to do a handstand. And that man was also in a very dark, desolate place because he went on to tell him that he was in his heart testing God, saying that, God, if you are really there and if you are real, make somebody do a handstand right now in front of me. And the, the, the guy did it. He did a handstand. And, the, and it, was a, it was a moment there of, of, of intervention, and the guy was blown away. And he was a light in his path, and he was sent, and he was faithful to his inspiration. So this is all being said just so that we can keep Ben in our prayers because you never know what this guy was going through is what, what was he was what was he taught uh, did he have f complete freedom was he suffering from some some darkness and depression that no one could you know like we don't know we're going to pray for him and for people listening out there like you don't have to do a handstand for crying out loud but like you can say a word to somebody you can say something to them and you can start a conversation and you you are the the voice that they need to hear because if if they don't hear your voice, they can't invoke anything because you're bringing this message to them. And that's why like your feet are so blessed because they're coming over the mountains. Like, like That's why you have such an important role as a Christian to be bringing this message. So snap out of it. Snap out of the cowardice. And the, the, the stop becoming so small in your, your ideals and your lifestyle and your, your ideas. Like Become a real apostle and become a real missionary so that you can bring this word to so many people who are in darkness. And they're relying, and they're waiting, and they're hoping for this in their life. So be it. Amen.